Ignition. We have liftoff. I have a drone company that's not on your radar. You don't know about this one. You may not know about it because it's not in the USA. They're in Canada. This is a micro cap drone company. And they're just getting started. And it looks pretty good from what I see. We're going to go more into it right now. We're going to check out the stock price. We're going to check out the financials. We're going to check out their drones. What industries they're involved in. Defense as well. Yes, it's up and coming. I haven't bought shares yet, but I'm getting very interested in the research starts now. Velatus Aerospace Inc. Now in Canada, if you're on the Canadian stock market, the ticker symbol would be FLT. But in the USA, I have to purchase on the OTC markets, over-the-counter markets. Now I have two brokerages, E-Trade and Fidelity. I can buy them both on there. And the ticker is Takeoff, T-A-K-O-F. And look at this six-month chart, up almost 400%. If I zoom out to five years, up 76%. There was a big drawdown, and it's been, for a couple of years, it's been around $0.08, cents, $0.10. Cents. What happened in June? of this year. They had a contract with NATO to supply drones to NATO, and that got the stock popping off. But what I like about this company is that defense is not their primary business. They're just getting into defense. Their bread and butter is the private sector, civil. It's a nice foundation while they build upon the defense sector. Let me show you more. The sky is not the limit. It's where we begin. Now, you will call them drones, but I call them critical infrastructure tools. Governments and private sectors want them for logistics, border monitoring, forest management, utilities, pipeline inspection, agriculture, and defense. And Velatus is one of the few small public players with regulatory approval in Canada, plus operational capability to scale. They do surveillance as a service, pipeline services, drone LIDAR inspections, drone inspection services, drone delivery service, wildfire services, UK service, crude aerial services. They have 12 helicopters, 9 airplanes, 90 types of drones. Let's look at their platforms. They have some incredible drone technology. The XRX-8, mission-ready unmanned aircraft solution for the most demanding jobs, inspection, public safety, search and rescue. The Condor XL, heavy lift drone delivery, reimagined. You want underwater drones? It's not a problem. We got them. They have the NDAA compliant flying drone for disaster response, inspection, surveillance, for missions that require a drone that is waterproof, dustproof, and with high wind resistance. They have the Ascent Spirit, rapidly deployable, rugged, efficient UAV for mission critical operations, all weather, high performance. That's the one. You need to fit in the tight spaces? That's the one. You want drone planes? They got them. Meet the idea Ford Switch UAV. Longer flight time, enhanced safety measures, friendly operation. UAV is specifically designed to excel in extended missions. Long endurance surveillance capabilities. They got a drone for every occasion. Using defense, public safety, emergency response, mapping applications. Heavy payload lift, we got you with the Condor. You can go on their website, check out the industries of where these drones could be used and the different drones that are utilized in the different applications. Under the platforms, you're going to see all the different types of drones that they have. The payloads, the software, the services. The DJI Agris meets the needs of every size farm while maximizing efficiency of the field, covering up to 15 acres per hour with an 8-liter tank and a 5-meter spray width. Improved construction project efficiency with drones designed for surveying, progress monitoring, and structural inspections. Optimized maintenance and safety with drones engineered for inspections of power lines, solar panels, wind turbines, pipelines. Velatus drones recognize each industry faces unique challenges and requirements when choosing the perfect drone. They make a drone for every application. It's amazing. They have the drones for public safety. And the news that really kicked this stock into high gear was the 1.8 million tactical ISR drones to the NATO country. So they've delivered a fleet of tactical intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance drone systems to, to a partner in NATO, in a NATO member country. Now, the transaction was valued at approximately $2 million Canadian. Doesn't sound like a lot, but something's up and coming because they're building a big warehouse, big operation facility. So something's on the way, and that got the stock popping off. Now, Velatus has a regulatory edge in Canada. It has nationwide approval in Canada for BVLOS. That's Beyond Visual Line of Sight plus heavy payload, plus night operations approval. 
They have received approval from Transport Canada to conduct long-distance, remotely piloted, beyond visual line of sight, BVLOS, drone operations at night across Canada in atypical airspace below 400 feet. This approval enables Velatus to conduct critical nighttime operations, including, but not limited, 24-7 border surveillance, nighttime facility security, search and rescue, thermal detection for wildfires, and cargo delivery. So Velatus can run commercial ops basically anywhere in Canada. Infrastructure, logistics, emergency response, surveillance, forestry, you name it. A major barrier for competitors. Velatus has been carving out a niche in the regulated commercial delivery drone space, the civil space. As I said earlier, Velatus also achieved notable success in the military sector with orders from the NATO countries. Now Velatus has taken another significant step forward. The Canadian drone manufacturer Velatus Aerospace announced plans to establish a 200,000 square foot innovation center and manufacturing hub at Montreal Maribel International Airport, making a significant expansion of domestic defense drone production aligned with NATO requirements. The facility will produce both proprietary Velatus platforms and licensed partner systems to support the Canadian Armed Forces and aligned nations. The company is also making acquisitions. They're pleased to announce the acquisition of a suite of advanced remotely piloted aircraft system technologies from Calburn Holdings out of the UK. It's a UK-based aerospace engineering firm. The acquisition marks a major step forward in strengthening Canada's sovereign aerospace and defense manufacturing capacity. So the company is acquiring the drone technology from the British company Calburn, is taking on its employees, entrusted with it, and setting up its own production facility in Canada. Velatus also has a new forestry contract with J.D. Irving for 2025 tree planting. Velatus Aerospace is supporting J.D. Irving's limited vision for drone-powered tree planting in New Brunswick. All right, here are their target markets again. Energy and utilities, mining and exploration, border security and defense, public safety, emergency services, construction and infrastructure, remote cargo delivery. Their history founded in 2018. 600 million plus active sales pipeline. Operating in four countries, 180 employees, 12 helicopters, 9 planes, 90 drones. They're expanding their global footprint. They're scaling remote ops, OCC service expansion, growth through automation, customer demos and reliability testing, surveillance as a service. Their technology is innovative solutions, end-to-end -end remote operations and cargo solutions. 10,000 plus remotely piloted flights, robust IP portfolio. Once again, they got a vast array of drone selections. Defense, civil, docs. Quarter two, 2025 financial highlights. Revenue, quarter over quarter, up 49%. Gross profit dropped from 35 to 32. Normalized EBITDA, up 85%. Cash position, 20 million. The revenue mix, I like the mix of 50% services, 48% equipment. For the services, 71% growth quarter over quarter. For equipment, 104% quarter over quarter growth. The financial profile, here's the revenue increases. Service and tech revenue increased 16%. Gross margin increased from 28% to 35% in two years. And once again, I like the product mix of services and equipment here. Services in yellow, equipment in blue. EBITDA improved by 93% between quarter 423 and quarter 424. If we look at market comparables, let's take the enterprise value revenue ratio. Once again, they're at 7.5x. They're undervalued compared to their peers here. Ondis, Red Cat, Unusual Machines, Xenotech, Dragonfly, AG Eagle, were undervalued, 7.5x. Enterprise value to revenue. Common shares outstanding, 611 million. Now they've been trimming costs and focusing on profitable segments. Last quarter they improved EBITDA while tightening the expenses. We saw that. The company's trying to guide for about 70 million revenue and 10 million EBITDA. It's still a tiny company, okay? And they'll probably raise more cash. There could be dilution on the way. So growth is, I mean, growth is not guaranteed. They're still pre-profit and reliant on contract growth. You know, there are some regulatory barriers, but they've already passed several hurdles in Canada, so they're good there. The catalyst potential, uh, with over $11 million in cash and multiple upcoming contract wins or expansions, this stock has solid upside if they land a major deal or expand into new markets. But it all takes me back to the biggest news for this company, launching the NATO-aligned drone manufacturing hub in Canada to boost defense readiness for Canada and NATO. And the CEO said, by combining an innovation center for rapid integration and qualification with a dedicated manufacturing hub for serial production, Maribel will become our anchor for Canadian-made defense-grade drones. Our focus is to accelerate readiness for CAF missions, ISR, maritime, Arctic, and base security while ensuring inoperable capability for NATO partners and a resilient Canadian supply chain. 
Let's take a quick listen to the CEO. Absolutely. Now, Glenn, if we can kick things off with the surge in order volume that you're seeing, Volatis has been reporting a very sharp increase in that activity, and that doesn't happen by accident. So what's really fueling this growth and how confident are you that this is just not just actually a temporary spike, but really a durable trend over the next year or two? So there's a number of things that are fixed, uh, are affecting it. I would say geopolitics is number one. I mean, everything had started three years ago with uh, obviously the development of conflicts in the world mm -hmm. where drones have played a prominent role. But that's become even more important recently as geopolitical uh, trends have shifted uh, to more, um, I would say, isolationist type policies. And it's caused countries to look inward to make sure that they've got more self-sufficiency, uh, more uh, security and economic independence. And I believe because of the impact on drones in modern warfare and modern defense strategies, we'll probably continue to see that um, over the next three to five years as people learn from the experiences of, of, U, of uh, Ukraine, for example, and start to integrate drones into uh, their own defense strategies. Um, first of all, it's our it's our industrial commercial activity that provides the base and the stability. There's much less volatility in, in uh, that space than there is in defense. Mm -hmm. But growth right now for the next three to five years will most certainly be the, the real, you know, exciting growth area. Defense is lumpy, but it's big. Right. So there's so much happening in that space right now, you know, with Canada's uh, increase in defense spending to 2% this year, three and a half and five percent subsequently moving forward. It's huge defense, uh, huge spending that's long overdue for Canadian military, mm -hmm. but also the government's recognition that we need to onshore and spend less of our of our dollar in, uh, in uh, for example, in our case, predominantly it's the United States. I think the estimate was 75 cents of every dollar being spent in the United States. That's become a little bit more challenging. So now the idea is to spend more and more of that money right here at home, which has opened significant opportunities for, for companies that are prepared to jump into that arena and, and capitalize on those, uh, those challenges. Um, but it's creating opportunities in manufacturing, um, in uh, defense procurement. There's, there's um, you know, I, I would say in my lifetime, I'm not sure in my professional lifetime that I've ever seen an environment that was, you know, so target rich in terms of opportunities. 